In the previous set of videos, we built a theme from scratch, but that's actually a pretty rare thing to do. It's important to do it at least once so that you have a sense of the different components in the anatomy of a theme, but most of the time what you're going to do is either copy a theme and adjust it, or create a sub-theme. And so in this section, what I'd like to do is talk about the advantages of creating a sub-theme and why you would want to do it, and then we'll move on to a demonstration of how to do it. It's actually very simple. The idea behind a sub-theme is that you can create a theme folder and set the info file such as it inherits everything from another theme, and you can do this with any theme. What that means is that then pretty much all of the assets of that original theme get pulled into the sub-theme. But then you can override just specific aspects of it. So for example, you want to override some of the CSS, you can do that without modifying the original CSS or messing that up. You can add additional image files if you wanted to change things around. And the advantage here is that you get to leverage existing code and you don't have to fork that code. And by forking, I mean creating a copy and having to maintain it. Some themes are built in such a way that it encourages sub-theming, and that original base theme is highly maintained, which means that if there's any bugs that occur inside of it, someone will likely fix those bugs. If you're using a sub-theme, it means that any fixes made to the base theme get pulled into the sub-theme as well and you don't have to do anything about that. Now this can also be a disadvantage because sometimes those bug fixes actually change the way that the theme works and you don't want to have that as a variable when you're building a sub-theme. So that might be a better use case for copying a theme and building on it and adjusting it and then paying attention to the fixes that get made to what would normally be a parent theme and pulling those into your copy. Another reason to use a sub-theme is that some themes do some pretty heavy lifting. They add a lot of additional settings to the theme settings page. They do a lot of additional logic and pre-processing functions. And all of those things are not necessarily things you want to duplicate in a custom theme. So you can instead begin your theme by creating a sub-theme and pulling in all of that logic without having to actually copy it. Now in our previous videos, when we created a theme from scratch, one of the results was that our theme didn't look very good. And the reason was that we didn't have any visual assets with our theme. We didn't have any CSS files or images to use as part of the layout. And we also didn't have any layout structure CSS involved. By using a sub-theme, you can pull in all of that information and then adjust the look and feel slightly till you get what you want. If you have a basic structure that you like, you can use a theme to use that structure. If you have a, a look or a layout that you like, you can leverage a base theme to pull those in and then make just minor adjustments in the sub-theme. From the perspective of a code maintainer, having a sub-theme makes a lot of sense because a lot of themes duplicate the same kind of things. For example, there are specific fixes for certain versions of Internet Explorer and there's some CSS that you need in order to have a three-column layout with a footer and a header. There are often reset styles that will reset the styling of various elements across multiple browsers, so there's a common starting point for all of them. And all of this can be pulled in from existing themes. There's work that's already been done for these, and there's work that's being done on improving them. So the more a maintainer can leverage existing code, and existing efforts to improve that code, the less work they have to do over time. 